All right. Um, so I think uh, where we're at here as we come into the home stretch. So I hope that was fun working with uh, the visualization stuff and uh, maybe gaining a little more comfort with working with some of the bioconductor objects. Um, and as we come into the home stretch, I wanted to basically um, loop back and ca catch up with this other workflows that we were supposed to talk about um, yesterday, and then maybe say a few words at the very end if we have time about working with large data. And uh, again, it would be really great if you could fill in that survey if you have a, had a chance. I think um, mostly the other workflows will be uh, me talking and then the um, working with large data. There's some exercises, but some of that will be me talking as well. So actually, um, what I was thinking of was, I think I'm going to blow this guy over to, over to here and make it bigger. Um, sort of my sort of uh, way that I've structured this is uh, I've added at the top of each of these sections sort of links to other presentations like uh, for RNA-seq yesterday's lecture and, and lab. Um, and then I've tried to pull out the most salient fe features and points down here. And so what I'll do today um, is uh, probably not visit these guys and just emphasize the salient uh, features. Um, and so with RNA-seq, yesterday we did probably the simplest type of analysis with the DE-seq workflow where we were working with some model or organism where we were interested in gene rather than transcript level differential expression and where we knew the gene models ahead of time. And so it's the absolute simplest scenario. And then sort of thinking about those workflow steps, the sort of essential things were with the experimental de design to keep it simple and replicated and to track covariates and be aware of batch effects. And then when it comes to sort of thinking about the sequencing aspect, it turns out that you want to use moderate length reads and um, the numbers of reads per sample don't have to be sort of ginormous. Um, it's a little bit vague there, vague there about what uh, a moderate number of reads means these days, but we don't, we don't have to really worry about sort of you know, multiple flow cell lanes per sample. It's rather the other way around. We can fit multiple samples on a flow cell lane. And actually for gene level differential expression, probably single end or paired end reads are equally um, uh, useful. And um, if there weren't any peer pressure, probably you'd opt for single end reads. But all the cool kids use paired end reads, so probably you'll end up doing things that way. Probably save yourselves a little bit of money uh, using single end reads. Oh, more common. Mm -hmm. Yes, all right. So, yeah, see, there, there's the peer pressure for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then the aligner doesn't have to be super fancy. It has to be aware of splice, splice, splice junctions because you're going to be aligning to a reference genome. But um, it doesn't have to be super fancy, so there are aligners like Bowtie 2 or Star. And actually, if you're um, sort of wedded to using Bioconductor, there are um, pieces of um, software in Bioconductor that would also be serviceable in this regard. So there's this R subread aligner, um, which is uh, really fast and sort of purpose-built for this type of analysis. And then there's a package called R Bowtie, which wraps up the Bowtie aligner. So you kind of get to use Bowtie from within, within R. And that may or may not be a, a, a selling point. And, um, I especially like the way that Bowtie is interested, uh, integrated in this package called Quasar, which um, is like an overall workflow for RNA-seq differential expression from uh, quality control through the differential expression analysis, and it's basically well done. The problem with workflows is that there are too many moving bits, and people always get overly ambitious with uh, what they're trying to do, but Quasar seemed to have a pretty reasonable design and uh, implementation perspective, so it's something that you might look into. Um, that's the alignment phase. And then there's this reduction in RNA-seq differential expression, which goes from the big data to this counts matrix. And then you, personally, I'd use uh, this summarize overlaps function in genomic uh, ranges, but other people might suggest external tools like uh, HTSeq, which is a Python script. And you'd use gene models from these TXDB objects that we've seen. 
or maybe from GFF or GTF files that you can easily import and make into a transcript TV object with a single function call. Um, and the end result is this matrix of counts. And then we've seen um, the typical workflow in the DEC package, or maybe you'd, you'd use EdgeR, or maybe you'd use both since they're relatively interchangeable and not sort of onerous, and explore the different um, results and understand where they become a difference. So that's like the basics. And um, but actually then people do other things. And um, the other things that people do are maybe um, not so well represented uh, for in part in uh, bioconductors. So people are very interested in looking at RNA-seq differential expression for known, and I probably should have added, or unknown tran transcripts instead of genes. And the sort of typical work, non-R workflow is to use uh, bow tie two for alignments and top hat to reconstruct the uh, the um, uh, top hat and cufflinks top hat to to do the uh, paired end alignments and cufflinks to reconstruct the splice sites and cuff diff to actually do perform the statistical comparison between groups and um, this is a workflow that you'd use for either um, known uh, known transcripts or for um, de novo discovery of novel transcripts, so say alternative isoforms that, are, um, uh, that aren't represented in the annotation databases. So that's what people would do outside of R. And um, there's some joke about, you know, in, inside it. My best come back to the Groucho <laughs> Marx thing about outside of a dog and inside a dog. Outside of a dog, a book is a man's best friend inside a dog. Did I see? <laughs> uh, yeah, um, but and then so inside R, we can ask about well what um, options are available and uh, there's this very interesting package called DEXSeq and DEX uh, is emphasizing exon and the basic idea is that when you look at a gene model and uh, the gene model has is, is composed of exons and the exons are assembled in one pattern or another and the and the differences between transcripts actually resolve to differences in the usage of particular exons. And so you can test for the differences in exon use, like in this sample, this exon is used a lot, but in, that, in another treatment group, the exon isn't used at all. And that implies that the transcript that that, that exon participates in is um, differentially expressed. And so DEXSeq takes that approach to assessing differential transcript use, looking for differential exon use and uh, being informative that way. And it's actually quite an effective tool for, um, for doing that kind of analysis. And this um, package R subread um, has uh, an interesting <coughs> purpose-built function again called subjunk, which um, searches for those reads that span, um, that look like junction reads that span splice junctions. And um, can tally those splice junctions, and then you can subject the counts of read spanning splice junctions to a differential expression analysis, like you've done with uh, DEC. And then there's this final package that I wanted to mention called Cummerbund, which um, works actually says, okay, well you might want to go through this pipeline to identify your novel transcript, but then likely you want to want to work with the output of cufflinks in R to do data manipulation and uh, further downstream analysis. And so Cummerbund facilitates the input of um, cufflinks output into R for further downstream analysis. So if you're doing sort of known or unknown transcripts, those are sort of the relevant, relevant uh, packages. And then um, these days there are sort of two directions that are basically pretty exciting. One is a sort of single cell expression analyses, and then the other is single molecule sequencing. So we've been sequencing these sort of columns of molecules, right, not single molecules. And when you sequence a single molecule, you can get very long reads. So you can sequence the entire mRNA transcript, so there's no sort of ambiguity about what you, what, uh, what um, uh, transcript you sequence. You've, you've got it all. And then single cell expression involves using much smaller quantities of DNA. And um, especially coupled with image analysis, it can be you know, totally revealing, totally cool to see that these particular genes are expressed in this part or this, this group of cells or whatnot. 
And a recent package added to Bioconductor for doing the single cell expression analysis, uh, working with that type of data, is called Monocle. And it's uh, by this guy at the UW, uh, Cole Trafnell, who was involved in the development of this uh, pipeline up here, the, the Arbor Titopat Coupling Structure um, Pipeline. So that's a, definitely a package to check, check out if you're going in that direction. <clears throat> So that's like uh, RNA-seq. Next workflow. Any questions about that? I mean, it's somehow superficial, but hopefully gives you a little bit of orientation. 